Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today we're going to take a look at how to get resin-like quality miniatures off of your FDM 3D printer. Now, before we get started, I just want to remind you of a few things. There is an Amazon affiliate link in the uh, video description. If you would please use that when you shop at Amazon, that helps support this channel and keep me making videos for you all. Uh, also, if you would be so kind as to click that subscribe button, that helps me with the uh, YouTube algorithms and gets these videos in front of more people and ups my viewership. So um, that said, let's get started. Uh, this miniature here is a Lizard Folk Warrior from Fat Dragon Games. It's one of my personal sculpts. Uh, this is completely supportless and is printed on a Creality Ender 3 printer with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle and a custom Cura profile that I've developed. Um, this new profile is uh, a modification of my 0.3 millimeter profile that I posted here a few weeks ago. It is linked in the video description. You can download that now. And as you can see here, with the proper profile and a tiny nozzle, you can get uh, stunning miniatures off of your Ender 3 printer. Um, going to go th cycle through these, uh, just a couple different uh, positions and changing the lighting, so try to catch some layer lines here. Um, but as you can see, the aside from some minor stringing, uh, and a few zits here and there simply because of uh, the smaller nozzle having a little bit more problem with overhangs. Uh, but all of this is easily cleaned up. I mean, there's nothing here that's going to present any issues. And the results are just incredible. Um, going to switch over here. This is an orc. Uh, looking at the, uh, the loincloth area, the individual strands of fur, uh, the hair... Uh, the muscles on the legs and the back, everything is coming out super smooth and very highly detailed. Flip to a different orc here. Uh, as you can see, this, this 0.2 millimeter nozzle is making all the difference in the world, and it's just staggering how much of a difference there is between this and the standard 0.4. Um, when you go to put your 0.2 no millimeter nozzle on, I'm not going to go through how to change it here. Uh, I did do a video on changing your nozzle on the Ender 3, and I'm going to link that above. Please click that link and go check that out for how to do it correctly. Um, but now we're going to take a look at what I've changed in Cura. Now, it's very important that you use this profile with your 0.2, and the reason for that is a lot of people complain about 0.2 millimeter nozzles uh, that they clog a lot. Um, they tried them, they get a lot of clogs, and they just gave up and went back to a 0.4. And the clogs are easy to eliminate if you understand why they're happening. It's not that it's plastic getting clogged in the tiny opening. It's the fact that you have a lot more back pressure in the melt chamber because there's a 0.2 millimeter opening instead of a 0.4. Um, if you think about it, when you uh, melt the plastic in the melt chamber, when that you go from a solid to a liquid, it expands. That creates pressure, and that's what's forcing plastic out the nozzle when you print. When you do a retraction, you're not sucking molten plastic back up through that nozzle. What you're doing is when you back off the solid filament, it reduces pressure in the melt area, and that reduces how much plastic is being forced out. You're not sucking plastic back in, you're just reducing the force that is being exerted on that molten plastic forcing it out the nozzle. Um, but that issue is what comes into play with the tinier nozzle. A smaller opening means there's more pressure building up in that melt area and that forces, that pressure has to go somewhere. So if it can't go down through the nozzle, it's going back up uh, and then you get heat deformation further up in the um, uh, heat break, which is causing your clogs. So you can eliminate a lot of this simply by slowing uh, the nozzle down. Now, if you go too slow, then you're getting radiant heat deformations from the nozzle staying stationary over given areas on your print for too long. So it's a matter of finding the perfect mix of just fast enough to eliminate that um, radiant uh, thermal heat being transferred to existing printed areas, uh, but slow enough that you aren't uh, forcing too much plastic into that melt area and causing a clog. And I've been experimenting with this for months now, and I think I finally found the perfect combination for this. As you're seeing in the photos, uh, the results speak for themselves. They're coming out nice and clean. Um, 
This Cura profile is a derivative of my 0.3 millimeter Cura profile I posted here a few weeks ago. The profile is linked in the video description. Uh, you can download that now. But I'm just going to run through uh, the changes I've made. I'm not going to go through what each setting does. I just did that on a previous video about a month ago. The link is up at the top right now for my Cura settings video. If you have questions about what these do, go watch that. I go into everything in a lot of detail. Um, but like I said, I don't want to uh, recover all of that now. I'm just going to go through and tell you what's changed or the major things that have changed. So starting at the top left corner, uh, layer height, uh, optimal with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, 0.08. Uh, initial layer height, I've set the 0.12. Be, make sure you do not have this still set the 0.2, which is the standard for a 0.4 nozzle. Um, you're not going to get a good layer because that's equal to the... Uh, nozzle opening. Uh, you only ever want to print a layer that's maximum height is roughly two-thirds of your nozzle opening diameter. So this is set to 0.12. Uh, all of my line widths are set to 0.2. Uh, going down, wall thickness is 1.2, which is six walls. Uh, it's important to get that wall thickness for strength on your miniature. Um, everything else is pretty much the same as my prior uh, Cura profile that I did a video on. Um, Temperature is something you're going to have to watch and you're going to have to adjust for individual printers. Temperature has way more of an impact with a 0.2 millimeter nozzle than it does with larger ones. 190 for me on my machines with my specific thermistors using eSun PLA Pro and Hatchbox has worked well. I've had people beta testing for this for me that have said they've had to up this to between 195 and 200 on some machines. So if you experience problems particularly with clogging start here start in five degree increments try 195 and then 200 and see if that eliminates any of your issues this is just a starting point um kept the retractions the same as my prior videos um uh, third column speeds okay this is where i've changed quite a bit um 30 millimeters is my default print speed now. Uh, infill is 30. Wall speed is 15. Uh, outer inner wall speed is 30. Uh, top surface skin speed is 10. Uh, top bottom speed is 15. Uh, initial layer speed that's uh, 15. Um, travels and jerks and all of that accelerations have all stayed the same that's why i'm not showing those if you want to know what those are you can go take a look at the cure profile or go look at my video that i linked earlier but these are the basic changes and the basic combinations that allow you to use a 0.2 millimeter nozzle on an ender 3 um, successfully without much clogging or without any clogging at all for me for like the last seven or eight weeks so um one last thing um Bed leveling. You want to make sure you've got your nozzle Z height calibration as perfect as you can get it. This picture here of the underside of one of my miniatures is what you're shooting for. You want to just barely be able to see individual lines. You do not want big gaps between them. You want it, the lines to be melting into each other, but you don't want the nozzle lower than this to where they're just squishing into each other and getting rough. Uh, because then you're going to cause more back pressure and cause a clog. Um, this here could even be just a hair too low, actually. Um, but this this is kind of giving you something to shoot for with leveling. Uh, you want to be able to make out individual lines, but you do want them squishing together, and that's kind of the sweet spot you're aiming for on this. So um, that said, thank you for watching. Please click that subscribe button in your bottom right-hand corner.